let's talk about the YAML header, which is an optional but important part of an R Markdown document. YAML stands for yet another Markdown language, which isn't important for the purposes of this video, but the YAML header controls many aspects of the R Markdown document. You're probably already familiar with the YAML header because it's included by default at the top of an R Markdown anytime you open up a new R Markdown document using RStudio. The YAML header at the top of the R Markdown document is going to be distinguished by two sets of three dashes with various information between them. If I hop over to an R Markdown document, I can see the YAML header here. You can see there are various options that I've specified using the YAML header. Let's talk about some of the most common ones. Some of the most basic YAML header options include the title option. The title option indicates the title of the document, which when knitted is going to display the title of the document in a font larger than the section headings or the main text of the document. You can also provide author information using the author option. Naturally, this is designed to indicate the author of the document, which is going to be displayed just below the title when the document is knitted. You can also provide a date to associate with the document. If you include text like this, that's going to indicate a static date. Each time you knit the document, you're going to get the exact same value. However, there are ways of specify, specifying a dynamic date. So if we include this information right here, it's going to ask R to look up the current system time and then format it in the format year, month, and day. What this does is each time I knit the document in R, it's automatically going to access the current date in R on your computer, and it's going to format the date in this format right here. So if I compile this document tomorrow, it's going to give me a different day than if I compiled it today. It's going to change by one day. Another important option specified in the YAML header is the output option, which indicates the output type that is produced when knitting the document. There are many output types available, and you can decide what output you want to use for a specific document. I also often have to use the bibliography option which is used to indicate the bibliography files that you are using in your document in order to enable citations. So I've already shown you the exact YAML header used at the beginning of this particular document, but let's look at it again. So you can see I've actually put my name in the title option. There was no reason to do that except that I thought it looked better when I knitted the document, and so that's what I've done here. As previously mentioned, I have specified the date option in such a way that when I knit this document, it's going to dynamically update the date and produce the day in the year month day format. You can see that I have two different output types that I can have enabled in my document. So I'm primarily using the notebook style output, which is an HTML document that also allows you to, out, to download the code used to produce a document which is very nice for collaboration. And I have enabled the number section options. And the reason I did that is because I have cross-references in my document. And in order to have cross-references, I need to have sections. And so if we scroll down here, we can see that my different sections do have numbers. I have two different bibliography files that I'm using in this document for various reasons. And I have them listed here. And so I can cite references in either one of those two bibliography files. As we conclude this video, I want to point out that it's really easy to make mistakes in your YAML header that are going to cause problems when you try to knit your document. So if you aren't very experienced with using the YAML header, I wouldn't mess around with it too much unless you really need to. When you do start needing to mess around with the YAML header, I would encourage you to read more about how to use the YAML header in the Bookdown documentation, which it can be accessed here. And there's many aspects of the YAML header that you can change and modify. For example, whether you allow code folding in your HTML documents, whether your sections are numbered, you can create customized code blocks that have different 
font styles, font colors, font backgrounds. You can add a table of contents to your document. You can apply a consistent theme to your document that's different than the generic theme that's automatically used by default. You can change the default text style, the default text size, you can change the default figure size, and a whole host of other options. To get a basic idea of the kinds of arguments or options that you can change through the YAML header, one thing you can do is to look at the, out, the documentation for your output format. So if I copy this text right here and run it in the console in order to access the documentation for the HTML document provided by default from the R Markdown package, I can see that I have options related to table of contents, the depth of the table of contents. This is, I think, related to where the table of contents are located, whether sections are numbered. We can see various options related to figure sizes, etc. And if you need more help with knowing how to modify or update the YAML header, I would encourage a basic web search because there is a wealth of resources available for you.